Hello and welcome to Horologique. Welcome today to the first impressions video of the Saint Martin SN076G. And this, as you can see, is a homage to the very famous and very, very expensive Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711. And before we begin, let me remind you that I am giving away this beautiful Saint Martin Smurf when I reach 1000 subscribers. And I am almost there. So it should be happening in the next uh, days, maybe the next week, and I'll be able to, if I reach 1,000, I'll be able to do the draw. So if you want to participate in the contest to win this watch, uh, I'm going to be leaving a link up here, a little card, so you can go to the video and let me know if you want to participate. And if after hearing all that I have to say, you want to purchase this beautiful watch, don't forget to use the links in the description below and there are affiliate links and if you use them you will be supporting the channel so thank you very much guys and up to now Saint Martin had undertaken the task of doing high quality homages to Rolex and Seiko but never had they undertaken such a big task as tackling maybe the hottest watch model out there the Nautilus and just so you know, the 5711 retails at about a little over $30,000, I believe. But in the secondary market, you have to spend upwards of $70,000 to get it. So a very, very, very hot watch. Has Saint Martin succeeded at making a high quality homage of this watch? Well, let's see. And let's talk about dimensions. So Martin says on their official store that this watch is 11 millimeters in thickness, 42 millimeters in diameter, and that's about it. So that's not a lot of information. They say, yeah, they say that the bandwidth is, thir is 13 millimeters, and they are talking about just this little mid-link here, but we will measure the whole thing. Let's see what the caliper tells us. Yeah, almost 42 millimeters in diameter, 10.9 millimeters. In thickness I'm going to give you the log to log but this is gonna be pretty tough because where do I measure let's let me tell you first let's measure from the top to the bottom log of the case 44.5 and now let's measure from the top of the first link of the bracelet to the bottom one and that measures at 49.3 millimeters and of course the width of the first log is almost 25 millimeters and it tapers down to 15.5 millimeters at the clasp is 17 millimeters and here it is on my six and a half inch 16 and a half centimeter wrist as you can see it wears perfectly well i was afraid that the 42 millimeters would mean that it's much too big but as you can see it is not it is perfect for a small to medium size wrist and size for my wrist this watch weights 136 grams 146 with all links and as you can see the dial is not a direct homage to the Nautilus the Nautilus has a more oblong shape to the dial and this is all the way around as you can see and I believe that this is not bad per se because it helps differentiate this watch and it's not a direct copage however all the rest of the dial is pretty much a direct homage to the Nautilus the beautiful horizontal stripes and that blue sunburst is just very very well made and you'll see that outside in the outside light uh, this watch is a royal blue and it's almost a sky blue when you put it under the right sunlight so a very very interesting dial as well the difference with the Nautilus is that it does not have the date at 3 and that is pretty strange because the movement in here is the uh, PT5000 a clone of the ETA 2824 which has a date and this watch has a has a ghost date so I don't understand Saint Martin's choice of not just opening a date window there at the top of the dial you've got the Saint Martin hexagonal logo which I have complained about in the Submariner with the elongated hour markers I believe it works better here 
because it's not all the way lost on the top of the dial as, in my opinion, was the Submariner. At the bottom of the dial you've got just two lines of text, automatic and 200 meters. You've got baton dials at every hour, but for the 12 marker where you've got a double baton so you can see in the dark where 12 o'clock is, which is a very good thing. The hour and minute hand are a direct homage to the Nautilus. I'm gonna throw the pictures here from Saint Martin themselves. Uh, I will do my own macros on the full review. You can see that they are very high quality as Saint Martin has accustomed us to. So a very beautiful dial and I believe that it's the strong point of this watch. Let's see the loom right now. So as you can see the blue loom is BGW9 and the hands and the markers and the hour markers are loaded with it as is usual with Saint Martin watches. What else did you expect? The loom is wonderful. The second hand that you see passing there is however not loomed, which is fine. Remember that this is a sports watch and not a dive watch. Okay, that was the dial. Let's look at the case. And you can see that around the dial you've got a circular ring and you've got circular brushing on that metal ring. You've got a downward slope that is fully polished and the polishing quality is pretty good as we're accustomed with Saint Martin. It transitions to a bevel which is I believe of great great quality as you can see there. That bevel that goes around the log, around the four logs, is just very very well made. On the flanks of the watch you've got horizontal brushing and this brushing is very very fine, so much so that it appears to be almost bead blasted, especially on the ears of the watch. I'm going to be calling these the ears of the watch if you don't mind, so you can see what I'm referring to. The front of the logs are vertically brushed and they are just as fine as the brushing on the flanks of the watch. So very nicely finished for the price point. Let's talk about the crown and the crown is not signed. It is brushed with a round finish but as you can see you have some kind of sunburst as well. The crown is a screw down as you can see which helps with the 200 meters of water resistance. And for some reason that I cannot understand, you've got drilled lugs. And the back of the watch is pretty sterile, but the fact that you've got uh, some information in a ring around right there, and the back of the watch is a screw back, helping with the 200 meters of water resistance. And of course, I forgot to mention it, but of course, you've got a sapphire crystal in here. All right, let's now talk about the bracelet which is such an important point in this kind of watch, in these integrated bracelet watches. Maybe this is where Saint Martin could have done things much, much better. It tapers very much like the original does. The linking sections are polished and the rest is brushed, vertically brushed. All is very well and well made here. However, I've got a big complaint and that would be this sticking first link. It sticks out quite a lot. Another thing to know about this bracelet is that it's not a screw down bracelet, but it's a pin and collar system. And from my experience, it's pretty hard to size because the collar sits between this middle link and uh, with the tool that Saint Martin give you, it's nice that they give you a tool, but in any case, as you can see, I have bent it already. Uh, it's pretty hard and you will need a pair of pliers to pull the pin out so you can resize the bracelet. Not a major complaint, but it has to be noted anyway. Okay, and the clasp is signed Saint Martin. And how do you open it? You've got a pretty hard system to open it. You have to open this part and then it's a deploying clasp. Let's see, a butterfly clasp. Okay, and this is the way you close it. You first close it here and then you close it here. 
all right and then you put the locking mechanism and there we go it is closed and let's talk about pricing this watch costs between 255 and 380 euros and i'll explain the difference in price of course this fluctuates uh, with the fluctuation of international currencies but today's price at the very end of September is 255 uh, for the PT5000 movement to 380 euros for the Solita SW200 and between the two given the price difference and the fact that you cannot even see the movements I would go for the PT5000 why? well the PT5000 is a clone of the ETA2824 it's a Chinese clone of the 2824 uh, which is very well regarded even though it's Chinese because it was submitted to the equivalent of the COSC trials in Germany and it came up uh, within COSC this movement which beats at 28,800 beats per hour and that has 25 joules and has a power reserve of, of around 38 hours and as you can see this movement of course hand winds it hacks okay and to finish with the movement let's have a movement accurate report to see if this one is running within COSC and as you can see flat on its back the movement is just within COSC at a rate of plus 6 with a very good amplitude a minimal bit error so that is wonderful on the full review I'll give you more measures in other in other positions so what can we say about this watch has Saint Martin achieved its goal to make as good a homage to the Nautilus 5711 as it made a homage to the Rolex of Mariner well at first approach I'm going to say no first because it was obvious that at this price point you couldn't throw in an amazing autologerie movement and you couldn't make the watch as thin as the original Nautilus but I think it's a very worthy try uh, I think there's a lot of room for improvement the bracelet being the first of them and we will talk about that more in the full review thank you very much for having watched the video don't hesitate to ask your questions and queries in the comment section below if you like my content please subscribe to the channel and remember that a lot more content is coming I'm going to be reviewing uh, more homages like these but I'm going to be reviewing uh, more Zillow's watches and more Seiko watches and I'm going to be moving upwards as I was before uh, up to the luxury Rolex and Omega section as well so thank you very much have a wonderful day and I'll be seeing you very soon goodbye